Hey, I just wanted to go over some stuff with you real quick. Uh, I've got this Bitcoin chart up and yesterday I suggested to some friends of mine, maybe now's a good time to buy crypto. And everyone's asking me, well, why, how did you come to that conclusion? I just kind of want to show them a trend that I saw. Uh, I have these two trend lines right here on my chart. Um, one on the top side, which is actually not doing a great job, but the one on the bottom side seems to be riding the line pretty well. And I've had this trend line up here for uh, about a month. But what's kind of cool about it is when I made my announcement yesterday, it was coming down towards this uh, uh, support line that I drew right here. And I told people, I think now's a good time to get some Bitcoin, right? And uh, I don't know if anyone listened, but I went ahead and I bought some Bitcoin yesterday based on my own advice. And uh, that's what I do. I give myself advice. And then sometimes I share it with friends and say, this is what I'm doing. In this particular case, if I sold today, I'd have a thousand dollar gain. So I should probably sell. But according to this, I think it's going to go and it's probably going to make it back up to the high 40s once again before it might take another dip. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. Bitcoin is definitely something that we all follow because Bitcoin is kind of the lead, right? But then I, I decided, why don't I go look at some of my other ones and see how they're faring? And uh, you know, one of the ones that we talk about on this channel quite a bit, one of the ones you talk about quite a bit is Chainlink. And so I just wanted to bring up Link really quick and see if it's following the same pattern. And unfortunately, the answer is no. But I'm still bullish in the years to come. But right now, clearly a lot of weakness and just not much else to say about it. That's why I haven't made many more videos. There's just not a lot going on with Chainlink right now. And sometimes it happens. Sometimes uh, tokens fall out of favor for whatever reason, and they come back with a vengeance sometimes. So I think this one has a lot of fun uh, technical qualities about it that are a really big deal for the future and for the current state of crypto. But a lot of other people aren't seeing that at the moment. They're putting money in other tokens. Um, yeah. I'm going to slip over to XRP, which is also um, not performing as anyone would expect, although they have this SEC pressure. Um, however, I do see that it is somewhat following the Bitcoin trend as of recent, but not nearly like you would expect with 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 a with an altcoin, uh, and not nearly what you'd expect from a token like XRP that has such a huge following. So I'm a little disappointed, but I would actually say if I were in XRP right now, which I am, um, but if I was looking to buy more XRP, it's an interesting story at 70 cents. And I was just wondering what other people might think of that. Um, but it's not. Uh, again, there's so many things about XRP, just like Chainlink. We don't know what's going to happen. I think that uh, I think Ripple will prevail, and this thing does have a potential of going up. And if you look at the history of it, it hasn't been the darling. Like you know, when when it hit its uh, high in 2017, if I scroll back a little bit, you can see it hit high of three dollars and thirty-seven cents. It never recaptured that in the recent run-up. Uh, that we experienced last year. And I think the reason obviously was because of the SEC. All that being said, I still think it's a good bet. Once the SEC pressure is off, this thing probably will go to five to $10, somewhere in that range. $100 is probably very unrealistic, but five to 10, I think is very realistic over the next 24 months. I see a lot of information going back and forth. I mean, you go, you see one article and one video, it says they're gonna win. And then the other the other one says uh, they're, they're ruined. That's the end of XRP. So honestly, I don't know what's gonna happen with the SEC and XRP. I really you know, it's, it's so funny that you mentioned it. It's kind of like a great segue into what we have to talk about next, which is this swap project. You just said it depends on where I'm reading and what sources I'm getting the information yeah. from. It's almost like they're polar opposites, right? Yeah. Yeah. So with that in mind, I, I, I kind of want to talk about this new project called uh, the Swap Project. I um, thought maybe you could uh, give us kind of an overview of what it is and take it from there. All right. Well, the overview of the Swap Project is actually something that Gary and I have put together um, when we've put a ton of work, effort and resources into this. And uh, in fact, this is why uh, this channel hasn't had as many videos posted to it lately. Um, it's it's a crypto project, but it's more than just buy this crypto and hope it goes up. And it's not even, hey, this crypto is more technologically advanced than all the other cryptos, uh, because that's a story that a lot of them have, right? And I think, I mean, just the, the base model crypto already has such incredible advanced technology. It's like, what can we do with that? There's so much we can do with that. I feel like that is not explored enough. And so one idea that we came up with, what we could do with crypto not in terms of technology, but social impact. And not just that, but let's use this technology to make the world a better place. It's it's the great idea. Like if, if we could think of the, the best thing that we could do with the new technology is make the world a better place. So we put those two ideas together. 
Um, we put together Make the World a Better Place, and we put together uh, Profit Through Crypto. We put it together, and we came up with the, with the SWAP project, which is an acronym for Save the World and Profit. Um, the two just great ideas all in one, and that's, uh, that's actually the website, savetheworldandprofit.org. We are using the crypto to uh, monetarily incentivize um, media outlets, influencers on opposing sides to report on stories that they would never otherwise report on. The crypto is filling in that gap and saying, hey, you would never report this, but we're gonna, we're gonna incentivize you with this crypto to report on this story to your audience that this story would never normally reach. We're gonna do that with the other side. There's, so there's two cryptos baked into this project together and they compete uh, on price. So whichever one rises the most wins for that week. And then the other side has to report to their audience a story that they would never hear. So um, there's a great video on our website to check out that really explains it all in depth. And it's pretty exciting. It's a really exciting project. Um, it's up over 200% since we launched uh, just a couple months ago. Everyone's really excited about it. It's a lot of fun. And I think a lot of people are looking for it to really legitimately make a difference in this world. The side that won last week is the left side. So their price of their token increased the most. So now the right side actually has to hear a story that they're not normally exposed to. And as we're looking through, uh, one of those stories is about, it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> it's not on the screen anymore. <laughs> so in that story that we picked is actually the GOP pollster says Republicans are mocking child Trump. And as you can see right here, 86% of the left is hearing about it and laughing about it. 14% in the center. But how much on the right have heard about this story? None. So we've picked this story because it fits the narrative. Nobody on the right side is hearing it. Only people on the left. And as Dean pointed out, it's causing this polarization between the two different groups. Well, now this news is going to become available to the side that lost. So what does it say? It says, the GOP pollster Frank Luntz said the Republican lawmakers are privately laughing at former President Donald Trump. Luntz made these comments to the Daily Beast this week, referencing a joke that Governor Chris Sununu of New Hampshire made at an annual Gridiron Club dinner. Sununu hit out at Trump at the event, calling the former president fucking crazy. Wow. That's all I have to say. <laughs> wow. So, of course, the left is hearing about this, and of course, the right isn't hearing about this. And why is that, Dean? I want to talk about that. Well, it all comes to money, man. Money got us into this mess and crypto, crypto can, get, can us get us out. You got it. You <laughs> summed it up just perfectly. And there's a number of articles uh, posting the same thing, a number of uh, news agencies and media posting the same thing, except we're not hearing it on the right. And this is the problem. So this is what we have to report as part of our segment. If you're yeah, interested so in this swap project, I think yeah. you should come join us at Check save the world and profit.org, don't you? Absolutely. Uh, I think it's going to have a little fun, a little excitement, and maybe make a real impact. So definitely uh, check it out.